Bruno Carrège, chief of police of the small French town of Saint-Denis, awoke a few seconds before six, just as the dawn was breaking. His cockerel, Blanco, named for a French rugby hero, greeted the new day as Bruno donned his tracksuit and running shoes. The morning jog through the springtime woods around his home in the Perigord countryside was a delight as the sun cast long beams through the pale of the new buds and leaves on the trees. The temperature was exactly as he liked it, not cold enough for gloves, but crisp and fresh enough for him to enjoy warming up as he ran, his basset hound, Balzac, bounding along at his side. Back at his home, its old stone walls glowing in the early light, Bruno fed his geese and chickens, watered his vegetable garden, and took a look at the seedlings in the new greenhouse he had built from a kit. He placed his kettle on the stove for coffee and put one of his fresh eggs into a saucepan to boil while he checked his emails, then turned on the radio tuned to France Bleu Perigord. He grilled the last half of yesterday's baguette, shared it with Balzac, and sliced his toast thin so he could dip it into the egg yolk. The national radio news ended and shifted to the local news. At the third item, Bruno pricked up his ears. Perigueux psychologist Marie-France Dutillet has filed a complaint with the procureur on the slow progress of the investigation into allegations of paedophilia at a church-run children's home near Moussidon some thirty years ago. She claims that the inquiry led by Chief Detective Jean-Jacques Jalipeau has been insensitive and dilatory and has denied justice to the victims who accused several local notables of abuse when they were orphans at the home. Commissaire Jalipeau said last night that inquiries continued, although the investigation was highly complex and controversial, since the allegations depended on memories that had been recovered during hypnosis by psychologist Dutillet. His good mood of the morning evaporated as Bruno sighed in sympathy with his friend Jean-Jacques, known throughout the police as J.J. The investigation had been underway for months and evidently wasn't getting very far. This was unusual. Bruno might agree that at times J.J. could be insensitive, but dilatory was one of the last words he'd used to describe the big, untidy man whom he'd come to admire on the occasions they had worked together. Such cases usually ended with a celebratory dinner at which J.J. played generous host in recognition of the many times during the inquiry when he had lunched and dined at Bruno's table.